Hello, I'm Gay Pinnell. Welcome to our series of mini-seminars on our newly published book, Guiding K-3 Writers to Independence, The New Essentials. We're very proud of this book, and we're offering brief commentary and lecturettes on many of the chapters. So watch our website for these um, bits of commentary. Um, I'm starting the first one based on oral language. Our chapter, written by me and Irene Fountas, is Oral Language as a Foundation for Writing. And we chose this, it's not the first chapter in the book, but it is the first of our website seminar offerings because oral language is the foundation of learning. It's a tool for learning and it is critical in literacy learning, especially for young children. I'm going to read a quote from page 49, the first part of the um, chapter. Throughout our lives, oral language is our vehicle for communicating and constructing meaning. It pervades every human activity and is essential for creating a community. Through oral language, adults in a community pass on critical understandings to the young. Oral language is essential for human survival. So I guess that lets you know just how important we think language is in this learning process. And of course, it's essential in literacy learning. We have to remember that learning language is a process of construction. The learner, the young baby, is hearing language all about him and picking up things that mean something and trying them out. So almost every utterance that the young child makes is a kind of tentative hypothesis that this is the way language works and this is how I can make my needs known and this is how I can communicate with others. It's a real human strength. And interestingly enough, the research shows that um, young infants and young children develop and acquire language in much the same way in every language all over the world. It's just phenomenal, the amount of learning that these young children do. As teachers, we need to understand the systems of language, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this first uh, segment of the mini lesson. Um, language, we could think of it as having three systems, and we're talking about oral language here, the language that we speak. We're not at this moment talking about written language, which represents oral language. So let's think about these three systems. Language has a phonological system, a sound system. The sounds of the language you speak mean something to you because it forms itself together in words that you understand. Um, maybe you've had the experience of being on an elevator with a whole group of people who are speaking a language that you don't understand. And it's just going right over you. You're not paying attention to it because while you know they're speaking, you know it's language, you don't understand how the phonemes are put together into words. Or what if you suddenly heard United States or Yankees? You'd suddenly attend because they're using something that means something to you. So language is sounds and we use sounds and we hear sounds and we parse them into meaningful units. Now you hear a lot about phonics. Phonics is the relationship it's really an instructional approach that uses the relationship between the sounds and the graphic symbols, the letters of a language uh, in our alphabetic system. But here we're really just talking about the phonemes of language. A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound that makes a difference in meaning. For example, mop and top. There's one phoneme difference. Phonemes actually kind of vary, and, and an M might be a kind of variation of several sounds, but they're close enough to be put together, and we can call it this idea, the phoneme. So young children, as they start to learn a language, acquire the phonology of that language. And that's why, as adults, when we start to <laughs> learn a foreign language, we'll almost always speak it with an accent because we know the phonology of our own language we've learned to speak as young children, but it's hard to acquire the phonology to speak like a native speaker. Okay, let's move on. Um, another system in language is called the syntactic system. Now the syntax it, uh, refers to the way words are arranged according to rules. 
that are used by the speaker of language. Now, here we're not talking about the rules of grammar that you studied or correct grammar. We're really talking about rule govern ways that speakers string words together. And uh, we try to have a few examples in here. Um, for example, you might say, I like peanut butter and jelly, and that sounds right to you because you're, you have your subject I and then the verb and the object following that. You might even say, peanut butter and jelly are liked by me. Um, but you wouldn't say, butter like peanut, I and jello. You just wouldn't, that would not fit the rules by which you string together words in ways that are meaningful uh, to the speakers of a language. Now, sometimes we call this structure, especially when we're looking at children's reading errors and trying to analyze them. So language syntax and language structure are pretty much the same thing. Children learn the syntax of a language in the same way, through interaction with other people in their environment. And what's very interesting about young children and the way they learn language, they might kind of truncate it at first. They might just string two words together, like me go potty or me too or go bye bye. And it sounds like baby talk, um, but in fact, they're starting to learn the words of a language. Um, they'll even, as they start to learn some of the way the verbs change, um, kind of overgeneralize. You often hear young children doing, saying things like, I holded my hand, she holded my hand, instead of she held. Um, that's because they've generalized that idea that when you talk about something you did, you have the ED on it. And this just illustrates the wonderful constructive learning that um, young children engage in as they learn a language. Now, syntax is very important to young children as they begin to read because they, they, they need to use that strong sense of the predictable rules to help them gain momentum as they go through a text. And the other thing that happens is that written language is just a little bit different from spoken language. It has words that you almost never use in oral language, like exclaimed and replied. And the syntax is more formal and more structured. It will help them a lot. If they have heard a lot of books read aloud with the complex written language syntax um, before they come to school and as they make their way through the grades. The third system I'll talk about is the semantic or meaning system. And it's impossible to say what's most important in terms of the systems of language. They're all operating together, all are essential. But the semantic system contains the words, sometimes called the lexicon, the words that have meaning to speakers of a language and all the complexities of those vocabulary words. Um, but it's also the way those words are put together in ways that create meaning. Um, the whole purpose of language is the communication of meaning from one speaker of a language to the other. So it all works together. The meanings consist of the words and the way they are put together using the language syntax. So you have something you want to say to someone, you map it out onto the rules of syntax, and then you say it to the other person using the sounds that go together to convey those meanings happening over and over and over, and speakers interact very rapidly. Uh, we're not conscious of language. It's very transparent. We don't say, now I think I'll say, you know, say it this way or use these words. Sometimes you might plan what you're going to say if you're giving a, a talk or, or if you're having a very serious discussion, but most of the time we're just thinking about what I mean and what the other person means. How can I get my point across? How can I understand what you're trying to say? So language is what we would call transparent. Young children have developed this incredible grasp of language. It's still growing, they're still learning it, but by the time they enter our schools. And it is their greatest resource. It has shown that they can learn complex systems, and it's the foundation for the way they want to teach them. I'd like to end this section with some important concepts about language that we we'll want to keep in mind as we look at every area of the curriculum. Our book, of course, is about writing, and it includes writing about reading, 
language is a real foundation for the for that. So um, I have seven points, and we'll go through them and comment a little bit on each. One, oral language is a complex, integrated system with many subsystems, sound, language structure, or syntax and meaning. And so that just kind of sums up everything we've just talked about in terms of the language systems. It is complex, and there are systems and subsystems. This is not something you can see, although many people have studied it all their lives and they've done diagrams of it. It's happening in our brains and in the way we interact with each other. And by the way, interaction is not just words, as we all know. It's um, not just what we say, it's how we say it. Um, and that, that sometimes has a great deal to do with the meaning that we can convey to our listeners. Two, writers and readers use their knowledge of the sound system of language and link it with letters and letter clusters. So that's where that phonological knowledge comes in. It's largely unconscious for the young child. But as they start encountering written language, they start to bring it up to conscious awareness. So they start to become aware of the sounds of language, those phonemes that make the difference. And at first they do it through rhyme and play and all those things that young children love. They clap words to learn the syllables. And they begin to say words slowly and think about those isolated sounds and they then learn to connect that with letters. And that is the, kind of the breakthrough. They start to learn in this alphabetic system that these small number of letters can represent everything they're saying. Three, writers and readers use their knowledge of the syntactic system of language to create and access meaning. Young children know when it sounds right, when it's meaningful to them. They start to talk in more complex sentences. And by the way, they can process more complicated sentences than they usually say in oral language because that's where reading aloud to children becomes so important. So that knowledge of syntax is very, very powerful for the beginning reader. Four, writers and readers use their background knowledge of the world and language to create and understand text. So in writing, they're creating the text, they're composing them in their heads, the meanings they want to convey, and then they're going through the, at first, tedious process of uh, saying the words, writing them down, putting them into sentences. And of course, they access meaning through this background knowledge that they've built, the meanings that they understand. Content knowledge, of course, becomes more and more important as readers and writers become older. It's a kind of exponential process. Fifth, language is learned through use and is supported and expanded by interaction with more expert users. So what does this tell us about our classrooms? They've got to be filled with meaningful language. The most important language resource in your classroom is you. <laughs> it's your ability as a more expert language user to interact with children in very meaningful conversational ways so that they begin to expand their language knowledge simply by the fact that they're able to talk, not just listen, but listen and talk and have someone feed back to them um, through conversation the meanings that they understand. I'll go to the next one, six, it's related. Talking about texts is a way to expand oral language to take on the particular characteristics of written language. So, not just talk, it's very purposeful talk. And of course this would happen around science experiments and, and um, all kinds of things that students are doing in classrooms, but it also happens around text. The text that you read aloud to students, the text that they read for themselves and you discuss with them. Um, talking about text expands children's knowledge of language. Of course it expands vocabulary because they're encountering new words, new concepts. They're hearing words in ways different from what they may have understood before, so they learn to understand multiple meanings of words. And they're also taking on some of the syntax, the more complicated structure of their written language of those texts. So it's very important for them to ground the talk 
in the text. And um, we have quite a bit of information on that throughout this book and how important it is. And of course it's important for them to write about text. And this is just talk expanded into written language, could be responding what, what I found surprising about a book, just a quick response, could be something um, that, that is a more extended kind of writing. But writing about text helps ch students in both writing and reading. And finally, seven, school offers the opportunity for children to use language as a primary resource in becoming literate. And the mediating factor here is the teacher, because you create the opportunities for talking, for talking about texts, for entering into conversation. You are providing the opportunity for them to develop the more complex language systems that will serve as linguistic resources throughout their years in school.